In this video, we are briefly discussing how we can create functions without a name, which we then would refer to as anonymous functions. So let's first create a new file and rename it into anonymous.ipython notebook. Well, first of all, you may wonder why would I ever want to do that? Why would I ever want to create a function that has no name? Because if a function doesn't have a name, how, how do we call it? Well, the answer to that is that we will see in future videos that there are applications where it is necessary to uh, put in a function, for example, or a reference to a function as an, um, as an input to some function that then does something with the function. Okay, for example, apply it to every element in the list or something like that. So whenever we have a situation like that, for syntactical reasons, we need to create a function object. However, the whole purpose of having functions is, as we have discussed before, to reuse it. That's the whole point of having functions. So whenever we are in a situation where we need a function from a syntactical point of view, but we don't want to reuse it, then it pays off maybe to simply uh, create a function object without a name. So let's um, start with a brief example. So let's create a simple function that simply adds three to whatever number we, we give it as the only argument. So what would such a function look like? For example, like this. Let's define it and let's call it add three. And the function, as I said, takes one argument. Let's call it simply num for number. So we also provide a doc string and when we say add three to the only argument passed in. Okay, so that is quite nice. And then we simply go ahead and write return num plus three. So that's quite easy. So let's define the function and let's use it. So add three, let's for example, give it the argument one. And of course we get back four. So let's see in memory um, what this means. So you could think of um, the def statement as follows. At first, the def statement will go ahead and create a function object somewhere on the right-hand side in the memory where all the objects are, and it will put some code in there. So in this case, just num plus three, and we will add a type to that, and the type is function. And then we will give the function a name, just like any other variable. So let's call it add three and make uh, this variable reference the function object. Okay, so this is what happens when uh, we define a function using the def statement. So again, two things. First, create the object and then um, basically assign a name, a variable name to that object. However, these are two different things. So as we have seen before, in different contexts, we may create an object and not assign it to a variable name. For example, when we uh, exchange an element in a list, for example, because then we simply go ahead, create a new object and make a list point to that, but don't create a new variable, okay? So what really, what's going on here is there are two different things going on that using the def statement will always happen together. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just create the function object without creating a name for that. And of course, we can do that. So the syntax will look like this. And in the beginning, it may look a little bit weird, but um, it is actually not so hard. So the syntax is, we are going to uh, use the so-called lambda statement. Lambda with a B, of course, so lambda. And lambda is a keyword in the Python language, which creates a function object, and it's an expression. So um, it is not a statement really. So in other words, um, as we learned in a previous video, um, an expression basically means it evaluates into some object and then it is up to us what we do with the reference to the object. So here we are going to get back a reference to a function object and it depends on us what we do. So let's continue here with the, um, with the syntax. So first the lambda, um, the lambda expression receives all the parameters that the function should take. So for example, num, and then we simply go ahead and write colon. So there's no parentheses here. And then on the right hand side of the colon, we have to write one expression only. Okay, so that is a limitation for lambda expressions. The function we create can only consist of one expression. 
Okay, so um, one of the functions we saw before, the average events functions, had two expressions, two lines of codes uh, in it. So we could not uh, we could not rewrite this function as a lambda uh, using a lambda expression. However, for easy functions just like the one we see here, this works. So let's go ahead and simply write num plus three. And also note how I do not uh, write the return statement here. So the return statement is the thing that returns the um, yeah returns some value after the function is done. However, um, the lambda expression does not take it. Okay, and that's it. That's the example of a lambda expression. So when I execute the cell, I get back as we see below the cell a function object, which has no name really. So it's kind of anonymous. And uh, what that means in memory is basically when we evaluate the cell, what's going to happen is we are going to create an object with the same code in it as the other function object. This object is also of type function. And then what happens is, and I show that um, as I did in a couple of previous videos before with a red dotted line, I'm getting back a reference to this object. However, um, we are not doing anything with it. And that is why I see here, and that's why I use red, that's why I see here um, the reference uh, to the function object. Okay, so I'm not doing anything. And now what have we learned before? What happens if I don't do anything with the reference? Well, what, what's going to happen is nothing is going to happen. So we, are, we just simply don't have a reference to this object. And that means after some time, Python's garbage collector comes in and simply removes the object. Okay, so let's um, go back here in the notebook. So in other words, every time I execute the cell, I create a new function object. I don't give it a name. And because there is no reference to the object, the object will eventually be garbage collected. So now you may wonder, what can you do with it? Well, technically speaking, what you could do is the following. You could assign this object, this expression, which evaluates into an object, you could assign the, uh, this object to a variable. Let's call it add three alt for alternative, just like this. And now what we could do is I could actually go ahead and call the variable because as we learned, a variable, you know, any variable in Python is always the same, you know, always works the same uh, way. So a variable, the variable at three and the variable at three alt are basically working in the very same way. And now if I go ahead and call um, this function object, I also get back four. Okay. However, this is kind of, um, yeah, something that you don't see in a code base because uh, whenever we want to give a function name, we would simply use the def statement. Okay. So in other words, that is something we rarely ever see. So usually um, the left-hand side, it works as we see, but we don't do that. So what else could we do? So what we could do is, at least uh, for now, we could not only create the object, but we could also call it right away. So um, how we do that is as follows. I will first go ahead and put a, a couple of parentheses around the lambda expression. That is there because otherwise, um, uh, what's going to follow will not work. And then, so this is basically just a grouping parentheses. So this is basically grouping this together. And then I'm going to um, um, add another pair of parentheses. And the second uh, pair of parentheses is now the call operator that executes the function. And because the function takes, as we see, one argument, that means if I execute the cell right like this, I will get a type error and it says, well, we are missing a required argument here, num. So uh, in other words, let's simply go ahead and give it an argument. Let's, for example, give it the argument one, and then I get back four. So what I do in the second cell is I create a new function object. I immediately call it with uh, the one as the argument, and I get back a return value. And then after I call the function, the function, because it still has not a reference to it, will immediately be garbage collected. It will immediately be gone. Okay, so that is... Um, at the moment, this is rather pointless to do because we are essentially creating a function, calling it, and then forgetting about the function. So this uh, does not make a whole lot of sense. However, um, there will be in future videos, um, there will be applications where we need to pass in a function to some other function, and then the other function does something with the first function. 
And in this situation, we could uh, pass in either a reference to a function which we defined with the dev statement, or simply we could uh, simply um, pass in a um, lambda expression, okay? So that is how we can uh, create functions that don't have a name to it. But uh, again, it's the same function object as, uh, as above. It just works like as above. And then often what you see is when uh, people use lambda expressions in real life, they also similarly to list comprehensions uh, try to keep um, the, the line, the code cell as compact as possible, which is why instead of uh, saying num, we often see simply x. So in other words, the function takes an argument, let's call it x, and it returns x plus 3. Okay, so oftentimes uh, this is what we see here. Okay, so that is how we create a function without giving a name to it. So in other words, this is how we only um, get half the job done here, only create the function object without the name. So we can split up these uh, two processes, basically, that otherwise would always go together into two different um, steps. Okay, that is it for this video. So I see you soon.